Hello guys and welcome to another video. So in this one I wanted to give you an update on my navigation and charging issues. So if you've been following me on the community tab um, you notice that I have been having some uh, charging issues and also recently some additional issues with the navigation. Right, so let's dive into it. So first let's dive into the navigation issue. So what is actually happening? That is that I am not able to use the navigation for trips that are over 400 kilometers. Um, basically it is related to uh, having supercharger stops in between. But what it does is I enter the destination, it keeps spinning for over 5 minutes and then it just says no route to destination. If I use the same destination when I'm closer to that destination, then there's no issue. It still takes quite a bit uh, to get that route, but it is calculating at that point. So it's not that the destination itself is an issue, it's just that the navigation system cannot uh, calculate that anymore. Now, uh, what, what happened before is I mentioned that to Tesla and they checked into my system and they said, well, I still have the MCU one, by the way. They said, well, um, there is a huge cache folder, over two gigabytes of data that's in there, and that is only map tiles, and those map tiles can be removed, they are cached. If you drive all over the place like I'm doing, I've been all over Europe, basically, um, then it caches those tiles, but it does not clear them automatically, which is not good, of course, because my system just was running out of memory. Um, so what they said was, well, we can delete it, and the only difference is that the map tiles are going to be loaded a little bit slower. I said, fine. But by deleting it, they actually deleted too much, and the whole navigation system got uh, screwed big time. So as you can see here, this is what I'm seeing on the dash. So the Google map tiles, they are loading uh, perfectly still, because that's just online and on the fly. But the maps behind the dash, which is the downloaded maps, um, those styles were gone abroad. I still had the ones in Belgium, but when I was driving in other countries, like Germany for example, on the last road trip, then I was seeing this on the background. Now even um, when I was uh, selecting the no route to destination, uh, or I was getting the no route to destination, I was seeing this, so I still see the navigation, uh, but no route selected. And also uh, just the arrow and no map tiles whatsoever. So I went back to Tesla uh, and they wanted to charge me to take a look at this. And I was like, guys, you broke it. You have to fix it, right? And it took me several escalations before they admitted they made a mistake. And uh, yeah, um, because of that, apparently some older maps were remaining on my car. And that made the whole system a little bit screwed up uh, because um, they initiated the download but during that download I had no map data whatsoever as you can see here uh, the version number is just gone for navigation data now the data is there and I again have the right navigation data version so that's good I haven't tested it abroad yet um, but what I also noticed is that during the download I had no navigation whatsoever. So it's not like the navigation data is downloaded and once it's downloaded it replaces the old one. Uh, no, it just starts replacing it immediately. So that means that during the download you have no access to the navigation. But I also had no access to navigate on autopilot, of course. But what I also noticed is I don't have... Um, the lane change, the auto lane change during that download. So apparently that data is also coming from the maps uh, and that is regarding the road classification because here in uh, Europe it only is allowed uh, on highways um, and on secondary roads we cannot do the lane change. So that road classification needs to be uh, stored somewhere and apparently that's also within the navigation data. Now next to that uh, there is the bigger issue that is that I am still having the MCU1 
So this is the media control unit, the first iteration. And that is no longer capable of following the firmware updates. So with all the games and uh, new trickery that is there, um, the, the system is being overloaded so much that basic functionality like the navigation is starting to bog down. Right? Um, so there's not enough memory on the system at the moment and that, cause, that is what Tesla is saying is one of the main problems why my no route to destination is happening. So Tesla cannot calculate enough points in between because it doesn't have the uh, required memory to do that. Secondly, um, something that has been known for quite a while but still it is uncertain as to why that is, that is that it helps for your navigation to clear your historical data. So all your previous destinations, if you clear those, then um, you get a little bit more memory available and then it, the navigation works a little bit better. Uh, I'm not sure why that is uh, or why previous routes would be taken into account maybe, I don't know. But it helps, we all know that by now and that has been a trick that has been uh, yeah, going around for several years and it still works but it does not solve my particular solution. Now, what Tesla also discovered when looking at the log files is that my MCU has not gone to sleep in over five days. So usually when your car is parked at night or during the day, during a long time, the car goes into sleep and the MCU shuts off. Um, except for when you're in sentry mode, but I don't have sentry mode. Uh, well, I do have sentry mode, but I don't use it. So maybe that's a bug related to that. Uh, although it's only been recently that apparently this is not uh, going to sleep anymore. So that also means that everything that is in memory stays in memory and that doesn't help either, of course. So in the meantime, I've done a manual reboot of the system. Uh, but again, uh, this is going to be looked at uh, by Tesla to see why the system is not going to sleep anymore. A couple of weeks ago, I also had an issue where the car, when I was done supercharging, the car gave all kinds of error messages, uh, like traction control was unavailable, and uh, autopilot was unavailable, uh, and all those kinds of things. But that only happened once, and that was also because of a corrupt log file at the time. So, the whole MCU system is... It's getting old, it's, it's kind of a dinosaur uh, within the car and it is holding the car back from its true potential of being a very nice environment to be in. What I would like is, for example, if memory is an issue, I would like an option to just not install those games because I'm not interested in any of those games, I'm not a gamer myself. Uh, which is weird as an IT guy, I know, but um, I would rather have a functioning system than just those uh, silly games that I never play anyway. What Tesla is also offering is, is they're, they're going to take the car in, they're going to do a factory reset on the system. Um, apparently the way they do the factory reset is different from the factory reset button that you can hit yourself. There are more systems being reset and everything. Um, but that means that I'm going to lose my uh, lifetime data, which I'm not too happy with, but if that makes sure that my system is going to work properly again, then fine by me, that's more important than just that one single lifetime uh, usage data. Uh, and I still have the odometer, of course, to get my total uh, amounts of kilometers that I've driven. The second issue that I've been having is charging. And within charging, there are two main things. One is um, that I get a lot of fluctuations during charging in, on several occasions where the car just goes from 100 down to 60 kilowatts back to 80 back to 100 down to 25 back up to 70 all within seconds and uh, I've had this a look at that as well and they say well those occasions are supercharger related they're not car related uh, and indeed I've been having this on two or three 
different superchargers but uh, and also on every stall of the supercharger i tried different ones and switching um, but on others the charging is just stable so i can believe them that this is a supercharger issue and not a car issue now the second issue that i'm having is that i'm not going anywhere near 120 like i was doing before uh, i regularly got 116 118 basically on every charge right now i'm not going higher than 108 something like that uh, and with the updated superchargers I should be able to charge at 145 146 even with this car so also that is something that uh, Tesla has checked they claim there are no issues with the battery at this point right um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not sure and even Tesla is not sure what is actually going on there now I've tried charging at different locations in different circumstances so i've done cold charges but i've also done charges in ideal conditions after a long drive after several ludicrous launches to get the battery heated up um, using the uh, max battery heating uh, button on the ludicrous cars uh, also helps heat up the battery all those things and it doesn't help i'm only getting a maximum of 108 um, so Tesla said there was nothing wrong with my car. There's also no software limitation uh, like it is on the 90 kilowatt hour battery. That's the only battery that has that. It's also not limited in the same way that the older 85 kilowatt hour batteries have been limited in one of the recent updates. And basically they have no clue why that is. Now, when I was not satisfied with that answer, um, because Tesla has the data, they looked into it further after a few discussions with them and after digging in the logs they found uh, several occasions of a so-called insulation fault. Now this is somewhat worrying to me because the insulation fault is in the high voltage system. So that could be within the battery, could be the, the cables between the battery and the motors, uh, could be within the motors, it could be within the AC system basically anything that is not 12 volts um, but again insulation issue that might be a risk for a uh, short circuit or even a fire right so I have to take it in the car they have to look at it but the thing is they only gave me an appointment like one month from now uh, which is uh, well if I'm driving around with a faulty system that might uh, set my car on fire. I'm not that keen on waiting too long, but it was the first time or the first slot they had available to look at it thoroughly. They're going to take it in for half a day, look at it. If it's battery related, and that literally means just the battery or just the motor, then it's covered under warranty. If it's any of the cables in between, if it's any of the switches in between, if it's the charger, if it's the AC system then I'll have to pay for the diagnosis and the repairs uh, which could become really costly I think I have no experience uh, with this but um, yeah I mean having a safe car that is priority of course so yeah there uh, there you have it that's the update that I have for you guys at the moment so early December I'm taking it in uh, hopefully they can find the issue and I can imagine that an insulation fault if the car detects that that it will also limit itself to charging um, to limit the risk so it could be related I'm not quite sure if it's, if it's in the uh, AC system then probably it's not related so I'm not sure if this is really going to resolve the problem that I'm having with uh, the charge limit but we'll see uh, at least I have a safer car back and there's no risk of my car spontaneously combusting um, but yeah we'll have to wait and see and hopefully Tesla finds the issue and it solves all of my problems so again I'll keep you updated guys so make sure that you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any updates on this and uh, for now thanks for watching see you guys on the next one Bye-bye.